Welcome to Mega Man Gaming, and today's review is going to be on a Sega Saturn Classic that I picked up at the time for quite the bargain, and ended up getting three times the price of it when I later resold it with the Saturn. And that is Guardian Heroes. It's developed by Treasure, published by Sega, and it released in North America on January 25th of 1996. It's a mixture of a beat em up hack and slash and action RPG with single player and multiplayer. The game includes a versus mode, story mode, and in the versus mode you can unlock certain monsters during the game. As you level up you do apply XP to a variety of attributes. And there are multiple endings and branching story paths. Basically the story, there's a supreme beating that created a universe to find ultimate warriors to hire as its personal soldiers. There is a vicious battle between earth and sky spirits. Sky spirits bestowed incredible powers upon the humans, effectively making powerful wizards for their own gain. So the human wizards join the effort against the earth spirits, banish them in the darkness, and then the sky spirits grew fearful and jealous of the humans afterwards and banished them all into the darkness with the earth spirits. Mankind instead opted for a more physical approach to life and the time of the sword began. One of the human wizards, Cannon escaped his imprisonment with the earth spirits and comes back to the surface to get his revenge on the sky spirits. So basically, this ends up being a a battle against the earth spirits, sky spirits, and the supreme being. And you do have multiple branching paths where you can approach this in different ways and receive different endings. Something I found rather impressive. This was a game that I purchased because I thought the cover art looked kind of neat. And it was 1995 at Walmart. And I said, wow, this looks this looks vaguely like something that would be like Golden Axe, which is a classic game I enjoy. So let's go ahead and get this pulled up. You have the cutscenes here that look quite impressive for the time. I am doing this on an emulator since I don't currently have a Sega Saturn, but I did own this game back then. Go ahead and start the story mode. You have different people you can pick from that have different abilities. You have Han, Randy, Binjuru, and Nicole. And you have a second player that joins in. It's quite a fun game as a co-op game. It actually takes advantage of the Sega Saturn's superiority with arcade style 2D games. Which at the time, which was a time full of 3D polygonal games, wasn't something most people were looking for in a console. Now some of the writing is a, is a bit on the cheesy side, but it's all coherent, and the plot makes sense even if it might be a bit on the cheesy side from time to time. Graphics have quite a bit of charm. I actually like the graphic style. You have magic attacks, you have a variety of special skills you can use. The, the gameplay is quite fast paced. You can jump in between different planes. There's three planes. And there are environmental things that can hurt you. For example, the fire here.
you have a variety of environments you fight in. And while it does push on a linear track like Golden Axe and Double Dragon and games of a similar ilk, it's in the dialogue where you get different choices that will affect the outcome of the game. Here we go seeing you can go between different uh, different planes. The fighting is highly responsive. It has this double jump feature that's quite neat. Once you get good at the game, which I usually don't pick this person. And it's been quite a while since I played this game, so I'm not that good. So you can you can update upgrade certain stats you have strength vitality intelligence mental agility and luck you do level up as you go gain more experience gain new skills it is it's a fairly long game for a game of the time period and that's just a brief demonstration of the game if you want more there's lots of YouTube videos on it. So what you have here is a game that has quite exceptional gameplay for the style of game. It's very responsive. It's easy to chain attacks together. Easy to do double jumps. You have a lot of control over the height as well as angle of your jump. And you have quite a bit of control over the if you're doing a jump and you're doing a jump with an attack. A variety of weapons, variety of magic in the game. And you do have a variety of players you can play in the game which have different skills. The music and the sound effects. The sound effects aren't terribly impressive, but they're actually fitting for the cartoon style of game. And for what they are being kind of the kind of the cartoonish style fight sounds. They, they actually add quite a bit of charm to the game and are well done. The music's well done as well and fits the environments. And it it takes an idea with Golden Axe and previous games of that general idea. Adds on meaningful story and plot, multiple endings and RPG mechanics and it combines them in such a way that created a game that ended up being my favorite game in my Sega Saturn collection, even though it was basically just an impulse purchase for being under $20 at the time. Pretty late in a Sega Saturn's life cycle. So where would I rate this game uh, on our scale? I definitely put it, give it a gold egg, so in the second tier of must-haves, and on our list, I am going to put it right below Legend of the Red Dragon and right above Soul Calibur 2. Now, as far as the ports of this game go, I know the Game Boy Advance port isn't that great of a port. And I can't speak for any of the virtual console or PlayStation releases of the game, given I haven't played them. Uh, or maybe it's Xbox Live Arcade this was on. Alright, according to this, is on Sega Saturn and Xbox 360. So I believe it's on the Live Arcade. I can't speak for that version, but I can speak for the Sega Saturn version. Now, if you're actually looking to buy a copy of this game, it's definitely not 19.99 or 95 or whatever the price was anymore. If you're looking to pick up a copy of this, Especially if you want a North American copy, you're talking probably over a hundred dollars if you want to complete in box, possibly even two hundred dollars. As far as price charting goes, it's at one twenty-seven ninety-three complete in box, and it's on many like top 20 and top 30 rarest North American Sega Saturn games.
Like I said, it is late in the Sega Saturn's life cycle. There weren't a lot of copies of it made. There weren't a lot of copies of it sold. And it's not a it's a game that really didn't catch on until afterwards. But it's a shame that this hasn't been re released on uh, modern consoles given it has a timeless quality and appeal and is one of the best games of the genre. And it combines elements from multiple genres to create quite a unique gameplay experience. So definitely check it out. It is Guardian Heroes for the Sega Saturn. It's a must-have if you have a system you can play it on. And if you don't have a system to play it on, then, well, I'm not going to advocate for privacy, piracy. I guess you're stuck playing it however you can. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the review. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.